family, hope you guys are doing well. So glad that you're worshiping with us today. Whether you're in the McAllen campus, Alice campus, Sherryland campus, or with our online family, again, so glad you are with us. If you are a VIP today, one of our first time guests, so thankful to have you. I pray that you are blessed by your time today. Hey, we have a really exciting day planned out as we continue on in worship and get ready to get into God's word. We have a special guest today, one of my good friends, Ryan Fontenot. Now, Ryan's been to BT before as he spoke last year at our One Weekend Student Conference, and we're excited to have him back. Ryan is the lead evangelist and the founder of Rage Ministries, founded in 2002. Ryan has over 20 years of ministry experience. He has a heart for evangelism and a heart for the next generation. Uh, we're so excited that he's with us, but it's not just that he's with us today. God has allowed us to enter into a unique partnership. Last year in 2020, we decided as a church that we would begin to partner financially with Rage Ministries uh, to help get the word of God, the good news of Jesus Christ, out to the next generation. But through some conversations, what we're able to do today and what I'm excited to tell you about, it's not just that Ryan's here preaching today and so excited to have him, but that we have agreed on a partnership between BT Church and Rage Ministries. And so Ryan Fontenot is not only our guest preacher today, he's not only someone we support financially with our missions funding, but he's actually stepping into a unique role as our staff evangelist. Ryan will be serving as part of the BT staff from a distance. He'll continue to live in the Dallas Fort Worth uh, Fort Worth Metroplex. He'll continue to minister through Rage Ministries, but we're going to partner together to train up people at BT to share their faith. We're going to partner together to be evangelistic uh, in all ways and to all people. And so again, I'm so excited to have Ryan with us today. And so all of our campuses, McAllen, Sherryland, Alice, and even online, let's give it up and make some noise to welcome Ryan Fontenot to the platform. Oh, it's so great to be here. So great to be here. Uh, I love Pastor Chris. He always has these little surprises. Like, he hasn't even shown me that video or anything. And so uh, it's an honor to be here literally uh, with my BT Church family. And I'm so glad you're here. Uh, as Pastor Chris shared, it was a little over a year ago uh, that I first stepped onto the BT campus for one weekend. Now, not much has changed in a year. I can tell. Everything looks ex I'm, I'm joking, or I'm joking, like last time there was no COVID, there were no masks, there was no social distancing, I mean, it is a completely different day today than it was a year ago, but here's the beautiful reminder I want to share with you all, is that the same God who was at work a year ago in this place, in this city, in this world, listen, he's the same God that is at work today. Amen? Amen? And so I want you this morning to grab your Bible if you happen to bring it with you, whether you're here in the room, whether you're watching online, grab your Bible, turn it on, whatever your preference is, and open it up to Luke chapter number 8. Now, I want to share with you a little bit to start about what I do. Uh, as Pastor Chris shared, I travel full-time with our ministry called Rage Ministries. Now, RAGE simply stands for Reaching a Generation Endangered. It is, the, it is the desire of our heart to go after this next generation, a generation that is drifting from Jesus. We realize that Generation Z, when studied recently, there are 10% fewer followers of Jesus in Generation Z than there were just in the generation ahead of them. In other words, we aren't gaining ground on the next generation, ladies and gentlemen. We're actually losing ground. As well, a recent study showed us that one out of every three, 35 to 36 percent of Generation Z teens, they claim to be atheist, agnostic, or have no religious affiliation at all. And so our heartbeat is to take the good news, the hope of the world, Jesus Christ, to the next generation. And I could not be more amped up that BT Church is a massive part of that. And so thank you. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. This partnership is going to continue to grow throughout this year and in the years ahead because there is a massive mission field in front of us. Amen? 
And so this morning, I also want to introduce you to my family. They're not with me today, but you will see the Fontenot family on the screen. This is my wife, Heather. Uh, this summer, we will celebrate 25 years of marriage. Come on, somebody. I mean... Uh, but, I'm, but I'm not teaching no premarital counseling class, all right? But uh, 25 years together. These are our three kiddos. Elon is about to turn 11. Inley just turned 8. And the crazy boy in the middle, True, he will be 4 in March. And they are home, and they will be watching online. And I want you to know they love you. They are praying for you, and they can't wait to get down here with me as well. As I said, our ministry really has twofold purposes. We have a mission. We exist for a reason. Rage Ministries is really twofold. Number one, to preach the gospel. That, that's what I get to do. I travel all over uh, the nation, all over the country, and into other countries. And number one, I, we preach the gospel to the next generation. But number two, as Ephesians 4 says, our job isn't just to do the ministry, but it's to equip or to prepare others to do the same. Look at somebody beside you and say, hey, telling people about Jesus is your job too. Go ahead, tell them. Telling people about Jesus is is your job too. In other words, we want you to be able to share about the hope that is in you. We have a mission. We are on purpose, and we believe that there is power in what God is up to. Which brings me really to today's passage, Luke chapter number 8. We've been in this series called History or His Story. And we've been walking through the gospel of Luke, and we've been talking about how his story, Jesus, changes people's story, you and me, and then how our story can bring about change in others' story. And today, we have a crazy passage. We have an interesting one. If you think the Bible's boring you probably need to read things like this. In, in Luke chapter number 8, let's just begin in verse 26. Uh, the Bible says this, Then they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite of Galilee. So this is Jesus and his followers. And, and they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, opposite of Galilee. And when Jesus stepped out on the land, look, look, look close, there met him a man from the city who had demons. Now, yesterday I flew into McAllen, and when I flew into McAllen, I stepped into the restroom because that's what you do when you get off the plane. You go wash your hands, you go to the restroom. Uh, Pastor Chris was coming to get me, and when I was in the restroom, I had a hat on, and the hat on said, No longer lost. And this guy in the bathroom said, What is that all about? And I said, Well, Uh, I once was lost, but Jesus found me. And he goes, you're a Christian. And he had kind of a, it wasn't a Texan accent. I could tell he's from another country. And I said, I am a Christian. I'm a believer. I'm a follower of Jesus. We're in the bathroom. And he goes, brother, me too. And he goes in for the hug. I'm like, dude, we're in the bathroom, man. This is, this is, but anyway. So when I got off the plane, I met another believer. Jesus gets out the boat, look, and he meets a man with a demon. (laughs) So for a long time, the Bible says this man had worn no clothes. Look at somebody and say, that's awkward. Go go ahead, tell him, all right? For, For a long time, this man had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house but among the tombs. This dude was naked, living in the graveyard. Now, I'm glad that Pastor Chris picked me up yesterday, not this dude. I'm glad that I met Roman yesterday in the restroom, not this guy. But look at verse 28. The Bible says, when he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and said with a loud voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. This morning, I want us to continue looking at his story. And I want you to see how his story can change anybody's story. That there is no one too far gone. There is no one so lost 
that the power and the presence and the blood and the life of Jesus cannot change them. Jesus was a man who lived on mission, on purpose, and with power. We know this because Jesus summarized his mission for us. In Luke chapter 19, in verse 10, Jesus summarizes why he came. The Bible says this, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Look at somebody around you and say, Jesus came because of you. Go ahead and tell them right now, Jesus came because of you. He came to seek. He came to go after. And he came to save. He came to rescue. He came to redeem. He came to set free. Jesus lived on mission. Jesus lived on purpose. But Jesus lived with power. When we read this story in the Bible... There are four simple things I want you to see from this story. Number one, write it down because you're going to want to know this. You're going to want to remember this. You're going to want to be aware of what happened here because, because just as Jesus lived on mission and on purpose and with power, if you are in Christ, you are to be living on mission, on purpose, and with power. But number one, I want you to understand when we read this story, I want you, number one, to recall the desires of the enemy. I want you this morning to, to, to just wake up and remember that, yes, Jesus came and lived on mission, on purpose, and with power power, but there is a real enemy that wants to thwart, throw off, derail that mission. And there's a real enemy that wants to thwart, throw off, and derail you. The Bible says that the thief, the enemy, the devil, Satan, the great deceiver, the serpent, that he has come, and he has come with a purpose. See, he's come on mission. He's come on purpose. And what's his purpose? His mission, his desire, his goal? To steal. Everybody say steal. To kill. Everybody say kill. And to destroy. Everybody say destroy. I want you to understand this morning that when we look at this passage, it says, and again in Luke 8, it says he sailed and this man met him and this man had demons and, and he wore no clothes and he, and he li didn't live in a house, but he, but he lived in the graveyard. I know when we read, they're like, man, that dude was jacked up. That man was tore up. That man was messed up. I want you to hear me this morning, church. Jesus has come for you to live on mission, on purpose, and with power. But the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. He has come against you. And some of you are sitting here this morning, and you feel it. You feel the oppression. You feel the way. You don't know why you woke up mad at your spouse. Hello? They just breathed. And all of a sudden, you're mad. Some of, you, some of you woke up and you're like, man, I don't know why I'm mad at my children today. I don't know about you, but there are so many times when my family, we get up, man, and we go to church together and we argue, find out, figure, just realize we're arguing over some of the dumbest stuff. Anybody ever do that in a car? Ever, anybody ever fight in a car on the way to church? Come on, somebody, come on, hands up and let's just, we got a bunch of liars in here. I can see it. The rest of us, yeah, yeah. It's, and it's over dumb stuff. It's over stuff that doesn't matter. And we think all of a sudden, well, you're an idiot. No, you're an idiot. No, no, you're an idiot. And the reality is the enemy's the idiot. Because he's come to steal and to kill and destroy, to disunite, to disenfranchise, to tear us apart, to rip us apart. So Jesus rolls up on the scene. He steps out of the boat on mission, on purpose, and with power. And this demon-possessed man steps up. See, he didn't realize that the enemy had taken over him. 
This demon-possessed man was in a place where he was naked, unclothed, living in the graveyard, and this had just become normal to him. And so many of us realize, fail to realize that we are walking under the attack of the enemy and we're just receiving it as something that's normal and the way life is and it's never going to change. But I'm here to tell you that, yes, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I want you to not only recall that, I want you to remember this. Jesus, remember, has come in power. Yes, yeah, the enemy, the enemy has come. We have a real enemy with real desires, with real wants. He wants to destroy your finances. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to rip apart your friendships. He wants to tear up your faith. But just as we have a real enemy that has come to steal, to kill, to destroy, a real enemy that the Bible says that he's prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour, we have a real Jesus who has come, and he's come. In power. Look close in verse 28, the Bible says, But when he saw Jesus, this man who was possessed with demons, who was living without clothes in the graveyard, who had been rev- ravaged and wrecked and ruined, now locks eyes. With Jesus. When he saw Jesus, say that with me, everybody. When he saw Jesus, say it one more time. When he saw Jesus, look close. He cried out. He fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Jesus said, get out. Jesus told the spirits, leave. You have ravaged this man long enough. You have ruined his life for far too long. You have wrecked his entire world for the last day. And Jesus says, get out. The Bible says it many times that it seized him and, and he was kept under guard. And, and this guy was bound by chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and, and he'd be driven by the demon back into the desert or back into the wilderness. But Jesus shows up. See, and some of you right now have stepped into this room shackled, chained, maybe with years or might I even dare say, decades of addiction and stronghold. And you didn't even realize today, you didn't even realize today's the last day that's going to happen in your life. Because Jesus is here. Because Jesus has power to break chains, to set free to bring hope to the hopeless, life to the lifeless, to set us free to help us walk in victory like we've never walked before. How powerful is Jesus? Hebrews 1 tells us this. Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God. He is the exact imprint of his nature. Now check this out. Hebrews 1 and verse 3 says this. And he upholds the universe, listen, by the word of his power. Did, did, did you get that? How powerful is Jesus? Hey, this whole universe is being held together by the word of his power. So can I ask you? As you recall the enemy and his strategies, 
And as you look into your life this morning, can I remind you that Jesus is stronger? Jesus is more powerful that if he is holding all of this together just by the word of his power, please tell me what addiction cannot be conquered in Jesus' name? What stronghold today cannot be broken? Hey, what lost person in this room cannot be found? What dead person cannot be made alive? See, Jesus has power over evil. He has power over the enemy. And might we just sum it up like this? Jesus has power over everything. Everything. Anything. Anyone. Anywhere. Anytime. So you might have stepped into this room today, or you might be watching online today, and you might sense that all hope is gone for you. But I'm here to tell you, not only is there an enemy that hates you, but there is a Jesus that can set you free today. Look at your neighbor and just tell him this. He's talking to you right now. Go ahead, tell him, all right? Uh, He's come to to set you free, to, to, to bring hope, and he has the power to do all things. So we look at this passage and we recall the desires of our enemy. He wants to steal, kill, destroy. But we remember the power of Jesus. But thirdly, write this down. As we live on mission, (laughs) on purpose, with power, you need to realize the blindness of so many. So I want you to get the picture. Jesus steps out of a boat. The demon-possessed man comes up to him. Jesus tells the demons, get out. Throws them in a bunch of pigs who jump off a cliff and die. Hello, that's power. And then word spreads. By the way, (laughs) this was before Facebook and, and Instagram and TikTok and CNN and Fox News. This was word spread. It spread like wildfire, if you can imagine Did we just see what we thought we saw? I mean, this this demon-possessed guy who was naked in the graves that everybody was scared of, now they come out and this dude is clothed. My question, where did he get the clothes? I don't know. But he's clothed. And the Bible says he's in his right mind. And people come out and see this. Now, if I saw this, I'm thinking my response would be, wow, I want to know that Jesus. But I want you to see the response of so many. Luke 8, 34 says this, when the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. (laughs) They they were telling everybody. Then, Then people went out to see what happened. And they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons were gone. He was sitting at the feet of Jesus. Check this out. He was, he was clothed and in his right mind. And listen to what the Bible says. They weren't at all, in awe. They weren't like, wow. Look, listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says they were scared. They were afraid. And then it says, and those who had seen it, told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. They're like, Jesus healed him. The demons had him. Jesus healed him. Look. And look at the response. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerizines asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. That's just a weird response to me. Jesus just set a dude free. Got some clothes for our brother. Sat down and was hanging with him. And here were the people's response. Get out. 
want you to realize there's a blindness in this world. See, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18, the Bible says that the word of the cross is folly or foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those of us who are being saved, it's the power of God. See, Jesus, this powerful one, all-powerful, almighty, all-knowing, this Jesus, he's the one who's came to seek and save the lost. This Jesus who came on mission, on purpose, in power, this Jesus, listen to me close, this Jesus His fans aren't everywhere. There are those who fear him, hate him, and want nothing to do with him. And there are those who love him, desire him, and want nothing more than him. Fear's a funny thing. Fear will either drive you away from Jesus or fear will cause you to draw closer to Jesus. And as you're in this room this morning, can I invite you to draw in? No matter what you stepped into this room with, no matter what struggle, no matter what sin, no matter what has been done to you or done by you, Today, fear will either cause you to leave this place and never come back, or it will cause you to step in and to come to Jesus and be set free like never before. Why? Because again, in 1 Corinthians 1.18, the cross, it's folly to those who are perishing. But to those of us who are being saved, it's the power of God. One last point I want you to write down. And this is the take home point. This is the one that that really we're aimed at this morning. Remember the power of Jesus. Realize the strategies of the enemy. Recognize the blindness of so many. But this morning, write this down. I want you to realize the call on the family. Ryan, what does this have to do with me? (laughs) Because I know some of you are going like, this is a cool story. A little weird, but cool. What does this have to do with me? In 2021, McAllen, Texas, or wherever you might be watching online, what, what does this have to do with me? Recognize the call on the family. Luke 8, 38, check it out. Don't don't miss this. So the man from whom the demons had been begged to come out, the the man from whom the demons had gone, he, he begged, he begged that he might be with Jesus. Duh. Can I just say that? Like this guy was set free. This guy was healed from demon possession. And do you know what he wanted to do after Jesus said it? He just wanted to be with Jesus. He's like, Jesus, can I just hang? Can, can, we just, can we just keep doing this? The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away. Jesus said, no, no, you can't go with me. Look at what he told him. Don't miss this, verse 39. He said, return to your home. And declare how much God has done for you. Return to your home on mission. Return to your home on purpose. Return to your home with power. Here's what Jesus said. Go home. Look at your neighbor right now and say, you need to go home. Go ahead, tell him, all right? Like, you need to go home. We need to go home and we need to live on mission, with, on purpose, and, and, and with power. 
This is what Jesus has told us now. As you have been set free, now you and I are to go and help others be set free. In John 20, 21, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so now I'm sending you. And this morning, I need you to grasp this, to understand this. That as we continue to walk through the gospel of Luke and we begin to look at his story. And Jesus' story is one of a person who lived on mission, on purpose, and with power. As we look at his story, that is to be our story. Yeah, I travel all over, and I get to preach the gospel to teenagers and churches and and camps and conferences, and I get to tell people about Jesus everywhere I go. And and if you're not careful, y'all think, yeah, well, that's your job. You get it. But it's not just my job. It's, It's our job. Because if you are in Christ, his story, listen, has changed your story so that he might use you to see others' story changed as well. So what's got you held back today? Maybe today you need to say yes to Jesus. Maybe today you need to look to him for the first time. Whether you're at home watching in your room alone or with your family, whether you're right here in this room, Maybe today you walked in and you're like, man, something's not right. Something's wrong. Something's missing. And you realize through this message, you know what's missing? Jesus. And so whether you're watching online or you're right here in the room, today we want to give you a chance to say yes to Jesus. Maybe you're trying to figure out this whole deal. You know you're a believer, but you need a church home. And you came in here today searching Hey, they're open. We're going to check them out. Maybe today this needs to be your church home here in McAllen, one of our other campuses, or even our online campus. We're going to give you an opportunity to take that step into joining this church family. Hey, maybe you're a believer and you've just never gone public with it. You've never been baptized since you said yes to Jesus. Today, today, Today we can change that. 